There's a VPN flying under the radar right now, and it's probably not what you think. Kaspersky VPN has made some big upgrades in 2025. Faster speeds, better encryption, and tools designed to protect your privacy without slowing you down. But here's the real question. Can it compete with the top VPNs, or is it just a backup option? In today's video, I'm breaking down exactly what you get with Kaspersky VPN, what it does well, where it falls short, and whether it can really compete with the big names like NordVPN or Surfshark. So if you're debating whether this is the right VPN to protect your data, unblock Netflix, or keep things private while traveling, you'll want to watch this all the way through. Let's get into it. So first off, what is Kaspersky VPN? If you're not familiar with Kaspersky VPN, it's a virtual private network service built by Kaspersky, a cybersecurity company that has been around for decades. At its core, it's designed to do what all VPNs should do, which is encrypt your internet connection, hide your IP address, and help you browse safely, especially on public Wi-Fi. It's built into the Kaspersky ecosystem, but it also works as a standalone app on desktop and mobile. They made a lot of upgrades since last year. It's actually a surprisingly solid VPN choice, especially if you're already using their other tools. Let's talk about the key features you get with Kaspersky VPN. First up, encryption and protocols. Kaspersky now supports AES-256 encryption, which is a bank-grade security and uses the Hydra protocol through its partnerships with Hotspot Shield. That's actually the same protocol that powers some of the fastest VPNs on the market, which means better performance and stronger privacy. And then there's the server network. Kaspersky has expanded its global reach, now offering over 100 server locations in countries across North America, Europe, Asia, and more. While it's not as massive as NordVPN or ExpressVPN, it's definitely enough for everyday browsing, streaming, and bypassing regional blocks. They've also added a kill switch, which is a must-have. This feature automatically blocks your internet connection if the VPN drops unexpectedly. So so your real IP doesn't get exposed. There's also split tunneling, which lets you choose which apps or websites go through the VPN and which ones use your regular connection. That's great if you want to stream local content while keeping your banking apps on your home IP. Another cool feature is the smart protection mode, which activates the VPN automatically when you connect to unsecured Wi-Fi. It's super useful if you work in cafes or travel a lot. And yes, it does work on Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS with clean apps that are pretty easy to use. Now, streaming and torrenting performance. One of the biggest questions people ask about VPN is, can it unblock Netflix? The answer is mostly yes. Kaspersky VPN does a decent job unblocking Netflix, YouTube, and some regional streaming services, but it's not as consistent as Surfshark or ExpressVPN when it comes to getting around tougher geo blocks like BBC iPlayer or Hulu. For torrenting, it works fine. It supports P2P on select servers and offers decent speeds thanks to the Hydra Pro Protocol. Just keep in mind, it doesn't have dedicated torrent servers, so it's not fully optimized for heavy downloading like some of the other VPNs we've reviewed. Speed and performance. Kaspersky VPN is actually faster than you'd expect, especially for a brand not primarily known for VPNs. In our speed tests, it performs really well on local servers and even international connections weren't bad at all. You can stream in HD without buffering and it's totally usable for video calls, gaming, or everyday browsing. Being said, speeds can vary depending on the server you choose and during peak times, you might feel a slight slowdown, especially if you're connecting to more remote locations. Logging policy and privacy concerns. Let's talk privacy because this is where things get a little tricky for some people. Kaspersky is based in Russia, and while the company claims it has moved parts of its infrastructure to Switzerland, a lot of users are still skeptical about potential government influence or data access. In terms of its logging policy, Kaspersky states that they do not log your browsing activity or any data relating to what you do online, which is great, but they do collect some connection data for performance and troubleshooting, which is pretty standard. Still, if you're super privacy conscious and you don't love the idea of your VPN being based in Russia, even with transparency reports, you might prefer something with stricter no-log audits like NordVPN. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the different plans and pricing options. So, to get the VPN for Kaspersky, you do need to get the Plus or the Premium plan because it's not included in the standard plan. In the Plus plan, you get the antivirus, anti-malware, and anti-ransom protection, safe web browsing, existing virus removal, anti-phishing, two-way firewall, performance optimization, stockware detection, crypto threat protection, data leak checker, and of course the unlimited 
and fast VPN as well as password manager and even more. And then in the premium plan, you get everything in the plus plan. So that includes the VPN, of course, but you also get identity protection wallet, smart home monitor, 24 seven remote IT support, and even more. The pricing does depend. So with the plus plan, for example, if you want one device, it's $42.99 for a year. If you want three devices, it's $46.99. And then if you want 10 devices, it's $62.99. So it depends on how many di- devices you want. And then with the premium, one device is $45.99, for example, five devices is $54.99, and the 10 devices is $65. So it does depend on how many devices you are looking to cover as well as what plan you're on. It's pretty straightforward, but if you want to check them out, we've left that link in the description. And then to get signed up, all you will do is go ahead and create an account. And then the dashboard is pretty standard. So you can see we've got subscriptions, devices, downloads, and store. And then they've also got kids, passwords, and VPN. Now let's go ahead and break down some of the pros and cons. Starting off with the pros. First off, it's super easy to use, especially if you're already in the Kaspersky ecosystem. It also has strong encryption with Hydro Protocol, which is great speed and stability. There's also that kill switch, split tunneling, and auto connection features. It also works on all major devices and unblocks most major streaming services. And it's a very solid value if you choose to bundle with the antivirus. Cons is the limited transparency compared to audited VPNs. There's also no dedicated servers for torrenting, and it's not the most reliable for bypassing advanced geoblocks. So should you use Kaspersky VPN? Honestly, if you're already using Kaspersky antivirus or want a simple VPN for casual use, it's a solid pick. It's fast, secure, and does what it says it will. But if privacy is your number one concern or you need something more reliable for bypassing geo restrictions across multiple platforms, platforms, you might be better off going with a more specialized VPN like NordVPN or Surfshark. Still, for everyday users who want to bundle security in one place, they do get the job done. Okay, that's it for this review. I hope that that gave you a better idea of what Kaspersky VPN can and can't do. If you used it before, I'd love to hear about your experience, so go ahead and drop any comments or questions below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.